trees make water. It's the truth. And in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how trees can both create water when they're planted and destroy water when they're removed. So let's start with the simple structure of a tree as a giant net for capturing atmospheric moisture and nutrients. The combined surface area of a tree's leaves or needles, branches and trunks, is surprisingly large when you imagine humid air or fog moving through the tree and intercepting each of its surfaces. Atmospheric humidity condenses on every surface of the tree as moist air rolls through. The water is settled out of the atmosphere and collected by the tree. And it's not only moisture that's caught by the tree's net, it's also fine particles of dust, pollen, spores, insect bodies, bird droppings, and more that are all collected by the vast net of the tree's structure. So when moisture is collected by the tree, sometimes in the form of frost when it's cold, it drips off the leaves, bringing all of these atmospheric nutrients with it to the soil level and down into the tree's root zones. This humidity harvested by trees can actually account for a large proportion of the total precipitation that falls in a forest. And then when the rain comes, the whole surface of the tree is a giant intercept for falling rain. Each raindrop's fall is broken when it hits the tree and splatters into a fine mist, where the structure of the tree itself directs the flowing water through it, down the branches and trunk, dripping through the interwoven network of leaves, washing all the dust and pollen and bird poop gently down into the tree's root zone. The soil below the tree is already spongy from all of the leaf litter and sheltered environment beneath the tree. So the water soaks through the soil sponge and is drunk up by the tree's roots. The tree becomes full of water. Just like the human body on average is 60% water, the body of a tree on average is 50% water, both above and below ground in the root system. So imagine a forest on top of a hill. So with 50% of every tree made up of water, you can think of a forest on a hill as like a lake's worth of water just sitting there. Remember, the total canopy of a forest is intercepting fog, humidity, and nutrient-laden dust. So it's collecting water and nutrients even when it's not raining. Then when it rains, the whole canopy breaks the speed of the raindrops and gently drips the rain where the tree's structure directs it to. And then the spongy soil soaks it up and the roots drink it in. And what's not absorbed flows downhill into the creeks and rivers below. So the hilltop forest moderates the time it takes for water to move through the hill. It slows the duration that it takes the water to move down through the landscape and keeps a big storage of water at the top of the hill in the form of the forest which will slowly release water over the seasons as gravity pulls it down. But at the same time that gravity is pulling the water down, the tree is also pulling the water up and out of the leaves and back up into the atmosphere through evapotranspiration and evaporation. And it's not just water that's rising up and out of the trees. A forest releases many tiny particles like pollen, leaf dust, bacteria, fungus spores that float up into the air. When these tiny particles encounter moisture floating through the atmosphere like clouds, then the forest particles provide nuclei for raindrops to form around. So we have clouds that have formed from evaporated water over oceans and seas, moving through the atmosphere over land, and then they encounter the air above a forest, which is filled with water vapor and organic particles. And guess what happens when they all meet? It rains. Studies in the Amazon showed that the forest there actually returns 75% of its water back into the atmosphere in amounts high enough to form their own rain clouds. But it's not just the wet tropics we're talking about. 
Trees in every climate have a partnership with the atmosphere. Trees collaborate with the atmosphere to produce rain and snowfall. And so the clouds that you see move overhead are not just ocean water vapor, they're forest water as well. In fact, forested mountain ranges help to leapfrog water from the coasts to the interior of the continents as water vapor hops from one mountain range to the next. The rainfall in the interior of a continent is dependent on the forest on the coast. So when you remove trees from this cycle through deforestation, you break the system. It rains less on barren land because forests aren't there to intercept the clouds with water vapor and raindrop nuclei. And when you break the system on the coasts, it then has sad repercussions for rainfall further inland. It's called drought. Remember, trees don't only bring water vapor and raindrop nuclei into the atmosphere. They also moderate the flow of water down into the landscape, making it more consistent and steady because the forest is a giant sponge of water storage. So when you remove that sponge and then the rain falls, the water rushes down off of bare hillsides quickly below and all at once. And down below the barren hills, you get floods in the valleys. So my friends, this sorry state of affairs is what we call the drought flood cycle. And this is where much of the world is today. Long droughts punctuated by short, intense floods. And shortly after the floods are over, the droughts start again. But as I've shown, in many cases, the course to take is obvious. Trees make water. Trees moderate the flow of water. Forests are part of the circulation of atmospheric moisture. It's really pretty basic, and hence, the solutions are basic as well. Honestly, we can undo this mess. We can just get our heads and hearts straight. So, go plant some trees.